Welcome back. This is The Sit Down, and I'm joined by singer Rhett Miller of one of my favorite bands, The Old 97s, and he's the author of a new children's book, No More Poems, a book in verse that just gets worse. How you doing, Rhett? I'm great. I'm happy to be here. Thanks so much for coming in. Let's start with the title, man. What, what do you mean? No More Poems. That's a hard sell for me. I really like poetry. No More Poems, a book in verse that just gets worse. Um, I found out a lot of things after the fact with this book. Like, first of all, in the children's literature world, poem is like the bottom of the barrel. Like, nobody wants poetry. They put you off in a whole different section. I grew up really loving poetry. Mm -hmm. Shel Silverstein, Roald Dahl, Edward Gorey. Of course. And, uh, and so that was what inspired me to write this. I was reading it with my kids, and as I was doing it, I thought, I could do some version. I mean, this isn't that different from what I do as a songwriter. And what are the comparisons there? What are some of the things that you see as similar? Well, uh, the, I immediately think of like what's very different. Like with songs, I sit down, I have no idea what I'm going to write about. Mm -hmm. I just kind of go stream of consciousness, and then I look at it afterwards. Sometimes even after like it's been released, I'll play it for my mom, and my mom will say like, "Oh, I think that's about whatever your dad." I'm like, "Okay," <laughs> and um, but with children's. Poetry, like I'll usually think, uh, I'll, I'll work completely backwards from how I normally work with songs, where I'll think of like what kind of character am I thinking about? And usually it's like an unreliable narrator or maybe even like an unlikable character. That's kind of my favorite thing is to go in and, uh, and give the kids who are reading it, and initially it was my kids because they were my first audience, an opportunity to use their deductive powers mm. to figure out like, well, what's really happening here? Is this is does this girl really have uh, purple pox? Is that a thing, <laughs> or did she just you know want to stay home from school today? You know, or is this dad really think his daughter is gonna push her brother out the window? Is this a real thing? No. <laughs> you so, want the kids to be able to kind of discern things for themselves. Yeah, I think people underestimate how intelligent kids are and how mm. savvy kids are. So mm. I really wanted to give the kids the benefit of the doubt. Yeah, you did mention there is a poem in here, right? There, one of these is really about don't kill your siblings. <laughs> and you've gotten like a little flack for that. Can you just talk a little bit more about why you want to trust your young readers? Well, like I said, I, I know with me uh, raising my own kids, and I have uh, two, my daughter just turned 13 and my son's full teenager. <laughs> so um, raising them, I really wanted to trust them. Mm. And I really wanted them to know... I'm going to trust you until you really give me a reason not to. And that started at a young age. Like, uh, you know, we we talked about a lot of things in, like, real talk. You mm -hmm. know, like, we talked about um, the hard feelings that you grapple with, even at a really, or maybe even especially at a really young age. Mm. I know when my own little brother was born, my feelings of sibling rivalry were intense, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And so um, in that poem, the one that sparked a little controversy, I just, I really wanted it to be funny. And I really wanted it to deal with, like, a real thing uh, in a hyperbolic way. Yeah. Which is the way that the kids see the world sometimes, yeah. right? Like, yeah. I felt that anger, even as an adult, right? Even you have, yeah. you have those moments where you feel that anger, and I think it's important to kind of address it head on. You mentioned that you had kids. Are they proud of you for, for becoming a kids' book author? Did they like the poems? When you, did they help you workshop them? You know what? Getting them to admit that they're proud of me is like pulling teeth. <laughs> and, um, but it, that's that's it's really sweet. Like they know that they they're in a safe space with me always. So they roast me all the time. They make jokes that are you know borderline or fully inappropriate. Whatever. Like they know with me it's okay. Uh -huh. Like at school they can't get away with some of this stuff, but with me they're allowed to just like go to town. And so when they finally saw this and it came out and it was a real book. <laughs> um, both of them had a moment where they looked at me and were like, wow, Dad, this is really cool. Like, I didn't think you were going to really do this. I'm like, <laughs> I know. I didn't think I was either. How did this even happen? <laughs> you're a little bit, though, like, I've been telling you, it's going gonna, it's gonna to work out. I got to ask, though, you're just saying they roasted you a little bit. Do you have, is there like one burn that sticks in your mind? Is there one that you'd be willing to share? Yeah, well, um, <laughs> So, like, there's always family meetings or whatever, and at one point, and my son, like, I expect it from him, but my daughter, is she's, like, really sweet, and she's just getting a, more uh, funny and uh, acerbic, perhaps, as she gets older. So I said, okay, team meeting, team meeting, and she goes, you're off the team. <laughs> like, right away. I'm like, oh, okay. It's the ones you love that can that, that yeah. hurt you, that hurts you the most. Listen, but that's, listen, this is a new, this is a new uh, art career for you. You have been a musician Old 97, incredible band. What made you want to kind of write this book and, 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 
And do you kind of like, are you enjoying putting on a different artistic hat? Well, I've, I'm now 48 years old, which I don't know how that happened. My I also don't, I want to ask you about your skincare <laughs> real quick too. Let's get in. You answer this question first. Um, but my, uh, you know, so my band started when I was 23. I've been living in nightclubs that smell like, you know, barely mopped up beer my whole life, like gross dressing rooms. Um, so now that I'm a dad and my kids are like, they really start to pay off. Like when they're little, it's a lot of work and it's a lot of like, you know, things that are easy to complain about. And when they get older, it's true, bigger kids, bigger problems, but it's also the path is so much bigger. Like they are mm. people now and we have these really sweet, heavy conversations. And so as they were kind of coming into this new age, like these poems are really my way of feeling them out, working mm. out the things that they were working through. And, and like, I really love it. It's like, uh, it's this whole suite. It's like the flip side of the rock and roll coin because it's mm. like, um, you know, it's like this sweet, there's an innocence to it. There's a, uh, there's so much of what I do is really jaded. You know, the old 97s, it's always been about this old nightclub stole my youth and this kind of feeling of like, oh, man, you know, if I, you know, if the rock and roll don't kill me, the drinking's going to kill or whatever, you know. <laughs> but with kids, you know, you're, you're starting over and it's mm -hmm. this really sweet thing. So I've, I've loved it. And I thought when I finished this batch of poems in Little Brown, which has been so great to me, mm -hmm. this company I work with, uh, when Little Brown decided they were going to put it out, I kind of thought, okay, well, that's it. I'm done. And I can't shake it. <laughs> so I've written another book. I've written all the more poem. I just, I think it's something that is now going to be a part of my life forever. It's, it's really sparked something in you, which is awesome. I understand you've got a kid's book. Your all book right. Out. Don't try to flip this around. <laughs> don't try to flip this around. Cause I do want to ask you, skincare for real. What do you, what do you do? How are you keeping it sharp? I do nothing. Really? Yeah, and I honestly, I, I believe that maybe that's a good thing. I think the, the less you mess with stuff, just the better. Like I don't like wash my hair a couple of times a week. Uh, I, I don't put soap on my face. I just put water on it. So let's not go crazy. Easy for a beautiful man to say. That's all I'm going to say on that. Listen, I, like I said, huge old 97s fan. But your audience is growing up kind of with you. And that's how I feel, yeah. to be honest. Um, Most Messed Up, the first song, I've been doing this longer than you've been alive. And that, I, it's one of my favorite songs because I kind of feel for it. But I, in listening to it, I'm like, oh, this is kind of an older guy's song. And the fact that I'm, you know, connecting with it maybe says something about me as well. What's it like to kind of to grow older with your audience and to try and make new music, especially in the world of rock and roll that's so focused on the young? Well, that's what I thought too. When, when I, I had a full scholarship to Sarah Lawrence College mm -hmm. when I finished high school and I went off one semester and I was like, I gotta do music, you mm -hmm. know, give it, throw away the scholarship like a dummy. Now as, <laughs> as a parent with no real savings for college, I'm like, wow, I hope my kids don't do that because I would freak <laughs> out. But, um, but my idea was that there is a sell by date on rock and roll. Like when mm -hmm. you hit 30, you are out. Mm -hmm. But then, the kind of music that I wound up making, and maybe I think this is true, maybe in general for music more than it used to be, but especially with kind of rootsy Americana music, um, like Willie Nelson is my hero. Willie Nelson is in his 80s. I mean, mm -hmm. he is, he's been doing this longer than, you know, most people have been alive. <laughs> right. And, um, <laughs> So, I, you know, it, I wasn't really able to write songs that I felt like were that, that acknowledged that mm. until recently, though, because, you know, when you're young, you're so in the moment. But then as, as now I'm in my 40s and I'm, and I've sort of wound up mentoring younger people. My, my podcast drops today an episode mm. with Trapper Shep, who's this Milwaukee kid who's so great. He's playing, I think he's playing New York City tomorrow. Mm. Trapper is amazing. 20 years, almost to the day, younger than me. And he's like young and he's optimistic and he's tall and good looking and I hate him. <laughs> but um, but Tra Trapper is great. And, and I, I, I'm not going to claim any particular mentorship, but I've mm -hmm. definitely been around for a while in his career and tried to help him and give him whatever advice I can give him. But um, I know for me, like I have a perspective on what I do and what I've been doing now for 35 years that um, that I wasn't able to acknowledge as a songwriter until recently. And now it's fun. Now I can be like, oh, yeah, I can write songs that, you know, they'll go out in the world and like kind of give people advice. And in a way, that's what wheels off my podcast is all about. It's just yeah. talking about how do you make a life out of this? How do we keep making art 
sometimes in a world that, you know, can beat you down and make you feel like, well, A, we're not going to pay you, but B, we're also going to kind of make you feel stupid for having chosen this profession because <laughs> there's a lot of good jobs out there that will give you help. Yeah. And three, we're going to tell you that we're going to throw you out after 30. Yeah. That, like you said, is obviously not the case. And, and say the name of the podcast one more time. Wheels Off. Wheels Off. There's a new episode today. You can definitely check it out. Rhett, thank you so it's much Isaac. for coming on the show. I really appreciate it. The book is No More Poems, a book in verse that just gets worse. Up next, Saeed is talking to Tony nominee Brandon Uranowitz. Be right back. <laughs> 